that is all that you require. And in this understanding, what goes away is ignorance. But we are saying that it is not just ignorance that goes away, we are saying Dukkham goes away. So the implication of this sentence is that your Dukkham is nothing more than just a creation of ignorance. In ignorance, Dukkham is born. And in ignorance, the Dukkham keeps on multiplying. The only soil which is fertile to keep on allowing this to come to grow is this. And therefore, the meaning of Devi, even Lakshmi, the meaning of word Lakshmi means, Laksha means the destination. The one who takes you that, to that destination is called as Lakshmi. The meaning of word Uma is also the same. The one who takes you to Shiva, the one who shows you what is that Aksharam, what is that imperishable, what is that Puran, is then Vidya. It is this Lakshmi. And therefore, when in your life you start preparing yourself to become qualified to receive the knowledge, then in true sense you have assured Lakshmi in life. And why am I telling you this again and again is because we have associated Lakshmi only with money. But mind you, Ravana also has money. In fact, Ravana has got more than Dashrata. And therefore, wherever the prasanga comes, wherever there is an occasion, Ravana does not spare that occasion. He keeps on calling Rama and Lakshmana as those mendicants, tapasvi people who are just wearing some parts of the trees around their vest and with matted locks, living in forest. The one who has been chased away by his stepmother, what is that fellow going to do to me? Ravana does not spare even one occasion of calling Rama as just a simple tapasvi, tapasvi Rama. What this tapasvi will do, what this mendicant will do, he should be just carrying one kamandalu and one japamala and sitting under a tree. What is he bringing the monkeys here for? This is Lanka, so many circuses come here again and again. If Rama is bringing a whole bunch of monkeys, what is new? We, we keep watching circus. Ravana, Ravana has more wealth. Please understand, Ravana has more wealth, but Sita belongs to Rama. Ravana demands that Sita marries him. And again, the birth of Sita is also the same. Sita is born from the earth. When we are talking about Lakshmi, she is born from the ocean. Parvati is the daughter of the mountain. Sita is the daughter of the earth, born from the earth. From the natural elements, Ravana demands that Sita, who is Lakshmi herself, marries him. Why is Ravana not happy with all the gold, silver, diamonds, power, status, everything that he has? In fact, Ravana has marched and has been victorious even over the heavens. He has brought all those women from the heaven down for his service in Lanka. 
everything he has. And yet Ravana wants this tapasvi's wife to come over here. The sense of lack, the sense of incompleteness. No matter what you have, you could be the most powerful person, you could be the most rich person, you could be the biggest scholar available. Ravana is not ordinary. Ravana is a Dashagranti Brahmana. Look at that. His birth is also from the Pulaska Rishikula. Ravana comes from there. Ravana is a Brahmin. Ravana is Dashagranti. You are not going to find a scholar like him. In fact, Ravana is such a scholar and such a statesman that when he was lying dead, he was dying on the battlefield after Rama's arrow had struck him. Rama told Lakshmana, go and ask Ravana. Have you heard this story? Okay, those who have heard, please tell them later. So, he, he told Lakshmana, go and learn, take some lessons of administration from Ravana. Ravana is dying. All his blood is getting drained out. He goes and stands near Ravana's head and says, I am Lakshmana, Rama's younger brother. You are a Brahmin. You are supposed to teach. Tell me those lessons. Give me the lessons of administration Rama has told me. Ravana opens his eyes and says, I will not go and tell this to Rama. Lakshmana comes back to Rama and says, Why did you do this? He is your enemy and why should he give me lessons of administration? Rama said, How did you ask that question? He is a Brahmin. He knows the ways. He says, I went and stood over there. Did you stand near his feet with your folded hands and ask for it? Go now and do that. Lakshmana was sent again. He goes and says, I am Rama's younger brother with folded hands. Can you please give me the lessons? There Ravana says, Now I know you are Rama's brother. There you prove you are Rama's brother. Vinaya. Ravana is not ordinary, please know this. It takes Rama, it takes Parmeshwara to assume the avatar to combat Ravana. Ravana is not that ordinary. Don't compare him to, you know, your ordinary politicians. Ravana can be far better than that. But the reason why we are putting Ravana over here is to make you understand that no amount of this wealth, Asuri wealth, Asuri Sampak, could make Ravana anything different. Ravana is as ordinary as anyone now. When it comes to Ravana's demands that I am incomplete, I am hollow, I am seeking, I am empty. All the women of the world also could not satisfy. He said, I want to have Sita. Ravana is empty. Asuri Sampat. There is another Sampat which takes you to Akshara. Akshara means not Charati, the Akshara. Akshara means decline, disintegration, charanam. Aksharam means that which is imperishable, that which cannot decline, that which cannot get disintegrated. Imperishable is Aksharam. That which takes you to Aksharam is Vidya. That who takes you to Narayana is Lakshmi. 
the one who holds your hand and takes you to Shiva is Uma Pavati. The one by whose grace you can see Ram is seen. Now you will understand that when the Upanishad talks about all this, all the Puranas may use different names, but all that is meant is for you to understand what is your destination, where have you to go. Without knowing this, you will keep on falling into the trap again and again, again and again. I have brought you people a very beautiful shloka from Mahabharata before we finish for the evening. This shloka he is quoted by Bhagavan Shankaracharya in his commentary on the, in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. It is meant to show the halas, the fruits or the results of Vidya and Avidya. What is it that knowledge can give and what is it that ignorance can give? Both of them are two different. And their halas are also different. Not only Vidya, Avidya are different, but their consequences are also different. This is a shloka which he has used. It is everybody's experience, but when that same experience is put in words, it opens up your understanding. You may have experience. Having an experience does not mean that wisdom has gone. You can experience several things, but just experiencing is not enough. Experiencing does not mean that there is wisdom. We all experience this world in and out, 24 hours. We are all experiencing this world and yet the wisdom is not born. We are experiencing this world 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, calculate the number of years that we have spent over here. And yet, we have not known how to escape from the trap of Dukkha. Experience is not the key. Understanding is the key. Bhagavan Bhashakara uses this. When we talk about Shankarachari Bhagavan, we generally in tradition do not use his name, we say Bhagavan Bhashakara. Sarpan Pushadrani Kakodapan Jnatva Manusha Parivarjayanti Arjnana Tastatra Patanti Kechit Jnane Thalam Pashya this is, this is a shloka from Mahabharata. Sarpam, Sarpam you know, Sarpa. A place which is infested by snakes. Sarpam, Kushagras. There is a Kushagras which is used in our rituals. This Kusha is very sharp. If you handle this grass carelessly, it can cause a deep cut. Pusha. Okay? This is Pusha. And the place where the Pusha grass grows is a little marshy place. Kathoda Panam. I don't know if you people have ever seen in our Especially, you know, in agricultural lands, we used to have those wells. These wells did not have walls, but they were almost flat to the ground. Can you see? So that drawing the water out was easy. The, the pulley, the moat could bring the water. Moat, what is it called? Yeah? Whatever, you know what I'm talking about, you know? 
that pulley is there. So the pulling the water out was easy if it was flat. And in the olden days when there was no there, there was no electricity and the lights put everywhere. If a person was to go from such places which was infested by snakes or pusha grass or a place where, where it was a well which was flat, the person will have, he will meet with an accident. He will injure himself. He may die getting bitten by the sarpa or by drowning in that well. But if a person knows this is an area which is infested by snakes, pusha or a well, he can very well avoid it and walk safely. 